Candidate Joe Biden said he'd lead by science. And President Joe Biden is. I mean, it's it's just basic seventh grade biology, but but I, I, I guess that's still science, right? And according to President Joe Biden, he would like to open up schools within the first 100 days and make sure that parents can get back to work. But the science says otherwise. There is uncertainty on the level SARS-CoV-2, which is the virus that causes COVID-19, affects kids. But we do know that kids can contract it less frequently than adults, but spread it around just the same. And we can say that COVID-19 has upheld one aspect of normalcy, and that's that kids can be gross. They're, They're basically adorable Petri dishes. According to a study published by Dr. Simona Begami of Montreal University and Dr. John F. Sandberg of George Washington University, the issue is that kids are the vectors to community spread. This basically means by opening schools, kids can track the virus, spread it to teachers, staff, go home and spread it to their families and therefore their communities, which will lead to a massive resurgence of COVID-19 cases across the nation. And this isn't some kind of commie, pinko, lefty, antifa ideology. It's the science that's been talked about ad nauseum by professors and teachers and scientists and comedians. It's the same idea that's been ignored by politicians regardless of their party affiliation because the economy, the religion, must be protected. But it turns out that COVID-19 doesn't give a shit about your rights, especially your First Amendment rights, considering it affects your lungs and your ability to talk. Conservative UK Prime Minister and new spokesperson for a head and shoulder shampoo, Boris Johnson, has said that the best way to to reduce the transmission of virus of the virus is to keep the schools virtual so that kids don't can't be vectors. Meanwhile, the Republicans and Democrats here in the greatest failed state say that schools need to be open because the kids and parents can't cope with this new way of life. Right? They both say it, it, it's best to get the parents back to work where the likelihood of spreading the virus would most certainly be increased. Why not give them, g- get them back to work during a pandemic with the most voracious virus this side of the century? I mean... It's not like you wouldn't want to offer families a universal basic income and paid leave or truncated work hours to cover their needs so that they they can be taken care of both financially and in terms of health. Look, this new administration is using schools to pit families in between economics and public health. But I do suppose it's incrementally better than the previous administration that was making people choose between the economy, public health, or injecting bleach. In Chicago, the rank-and-file teachers are on strike as they move away from the Chicago's teacher union, or the CTU, and form the Chicago Rank-and-File Safety Committee. And sure, CTU has an acronym that rolls right off the tongue, unlike CRFSC, but the CTU has joined with the Democratic Party to reopen school despite the science. In fact, so is the American Federation of Teachers, or AFT. Boy, it really seems like most organizations that get boiled down to a three-letter acronym are really detrimental to humanity, right? The CIA, the FBI, the NSA, the AFT, the CTU, they're all getting us closer to extinction. The only one that might not is BLM. Look, even America's science king, Dr. Anthony Fauci, is for reopening schools. The president the AFT and Fauci being resp- being for reopening doesn't make any sense since they're talking about being guided by science. And the science tells us that this is dangerous. This this is possibly just as dangerous, if not more, than reopening bars and restaurants and nightclubs, which have all contributed to the resurgence of COVID-19 in recent months. And nightclubs have been the number one cause of unwanted bathroom pregnancies and herpes for decades now. And because of these type of incongruous messaging, it's easy for people to get confused and fall through into the rabbit holes of conspiracy. The president and Dr. Fauci are manufacturing reasons for conspiracy theories to exist. 
In Chicago, there have been 150 infection cases in the public schools alone, and a custodian has died from COVID-19. And of course, this raises concerns for teachers and the staff, and it should raise concerns for the parents too. Do you really want your kids to be in an environment where people are contracting an evolving and voracious virus? I mean, Dr. Fauci doesn't want teachers or kids to be vaccinated early before the reopening of schools, but rather use a rapid antigen test to see what the conditions are in the schools. Yeah, let's use a rapid antigen test, which has been proven to be less than 50% effective. But hey, what the hell? Right now that we have a Democrat in office, I suppose we can say we care about safety, but decide in the opposite direction. And everyone will still cheer you for being, quote, scientific when you are clearly ignoring the fucking science. It's fun. It's fun when satire becomes reality, isn't it? It's not. It's, uh, it's, it's really not. It's quite depressing when that happens. Teachers are expressing concerns, and they're putting in requests for telework or teaching from home. These requests are being denied and result in loss of pay for these teachers, which is illegal. Now, when this sort of stuff happens, the unions would be the ones to represent the working class at the negotiating table and call for a strike. But in Chicago, they're just collecting a list of grievances. Look, I understand that we're in a pandemic and people do weird shit, but collecting grievances has to be the strangest hobby someone has decided to take up. Besides, do you do you do you file it away in a filing cabinet or or is there like a special jar that you put all your grievances in? I kind of hope it's a jar. I think it would be more fun if it was a jar. And I'm not particularly surprised that the unions aren't supporting a strike. In 2020, we saw thousands of strikes, and some of them were teacher strikes. Randy Weingarten, the president of the AFT, who also sits on the DNC, said that we shouldn't be striking, but rather use the courts to get what we need. Right, the same courts that usually legislate on behalf of corporations, big businesses, and killer cops. Look, the unions are failing their rank-and-file members by supporting the oligarchy, which is the opposite of what unions are meant to do. And Randy Weingarten also said if New York City can figure out in-person learning, then so can Chicago. Now, Ms. Weingarten, if New York City were to jump off of a bridge, would you expect Chicago to do so as well? Eugene Debs and Mother Jones are screaming in their graves right now. The president of a union sitting on the board of the DNC goes against everything the labor movement fought for. So, if the teachers can't depend on the unions, where do they turn? Teachers from all across the nation have joined in solidarity with uh, Chicago's rank-and-file teachers. Teachers from Tennessee, Texas, New York, New Mexico, Washington, D.C., and more have come out in support of of these rank-and-file teachers and even formed their own committees. Not only that, but auto workers from Chicago, Indiana, and Michigan have joined in solidarity to make sure that schools stay virtually, uh, schools stay virtual, non-essential businesses stay closed, and workers are compensated appropriately. At this point, the American government owes everybody roughly $22,000 in back UBI payments. In Montgomery, Alabama, the epicenter of the civil rights movements, where Martin Luther King Jr. talked about anti-capitalist and pro-socialist ideologies through civil disobedience, has also seen rank-and-file teachers thrown under the bus. 24 hours after it was decided that schools would be taught virtually, the board and the union decided that teachers have to come in once a week and an extra half day for faculty meetings. Look, Alabama has seen more than its fair share of COVID-related deaths of, of all of their staff, a bunch of their staff. So coming into this environment seems like a bad idea, mostly because it is. It's a bad idea to do this. The state of New Mexico is in a similar position to Chicago and Montgomery, and much like them, has formed a rank-and-file safety committee. In Washington, D.C., the Washington Teachers Union, or the WTU, tried to restrict a strike, but ultimately failed as most of the rank-and-file members voted to strike. But the union, once again, is stepping up to to not take any sort of direct action. 
And before we get a lot more deeper into this, I, I get the strain of virtual education on students and parents. I understand the psychological toll of not being able to see your friends and explore the world to expand curiosity can have on a child. I also understand the difficulty for parents to manage a work-life balance. But this is not the fault of educators and the school staff. This is the unwillingness of a government to have foresight to figure out reasonable solutions to real problems. This is the fault of politicians who have failed to do their jobs, which are funded by the taxpayers. If they really cared about the lives of their students, the teachers, the staff, and parents alike, the Biden administration and the AFT could have formulated a plan for virtual learning. Instead of hiding in a bunker, candidate Joe Biden could have worked with tech companies that have profited magnanimously during the pandemic to develop a platform for educators and parents to use that would have made virtual learning and teaching a whole lot easier. He would have also learned what the internet is. He could have also used his first day to enact a legislation that would have given American families a universal basic income instead of invading Syria again. So why is it that there is such a bipartisan push for reopening schools? From top to bottom, this is about the Democratic Party co-opting the workers' movement. The president of the American Federation of Teachers is part of the Democratic National Committee, a corporate entity that controls the Democratic primaries and the debates. This means that the teachers' unions aren't working on behalf of the teachers, but rather large corporate interests. The Democrats, much like the Republicans, are a pro-corporate, pro-capitalist, pro-war party. This means that they too believe in profit over everything else. The Democrats want to go back to normal. And the normal in the Obama era was still rampant climate change, police brutality, people not being able to afford a $400 emergency, failing education system where teachers are underfunded and school shootings were the norm. We ignored the root of these issues because a handsome, debonair Democrat who could finish his sentence without stumbling into a racial epithet was president. Normal was complacency to real issues and wearing a rainbow flag pin on your lapel while turning a blind eye to the real strife of all workers. In order to reach this normal, the Democrats are lining up with Republicans to get parents back to work, which means that the kids would have to be at school. If there's no working class, who will the capitalists exploit to seize the means of production, you guys? Look, all this proves is that both parties could give two shits less about science, safety, and welfare. And let's be clear, there are only two shits to give. You can't have a third shit, okay? Just like you can't have a third party. The, the, the duopoly exists in shit as well. And the unions, with the unions being absorbed into this party, the rank and file can't depend on them to collectively bargain for the working class. Teachers, nurses, and any frontline worker are called essential, yet Democrats and corporate un their corporate union cohorts are willing to throw their lives away like a teenager throws away a used tissue. Every action taken by the Democratic Party is antithetical to their words. So what options do the working class have? The options are laid out by the teachers across the nation. They have formed a rank-and-file safety committee that can be translated to every industry and are organizing sick-outs and strikes. The capitalist system has blatantly showed the world that it has no intention for caring for the lives of its workers. So now is the time for parents, students, community leaders to join in solidarity with the rank-and-file teachers, factory workers, nurses across the nation, and strike against these homicidal policies to open schools when vaccinations are behind schedule and there's no plan to inoculate kids and educators. This is the time for a general strike that puts the working class at the negotiating table where safety and compassion are a vital part of the economics. And that has been your dispatch for this week. Thank you guys so much for tuning in.
Uh, a great, another great way to to help this show, if you are on stable financial ground, is to make a one-time contribution or become a sustaining member over at krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. Uh, if you become a sustaining member, you get free tickets to live virtual stand-up comedy shows. And when touring comes back, you'll get tickets to my live shows when I come through your city. Uh, you also get bonus stand-up comedy content and early access to longer in-depth episodes of Forkful of Noodles before they're released out to the the general public, so, so it would seem. Um, while you're on my website, you can also download my stand-up comedy albums. I have a variety of different stand-up comedy albums, the most recent of which is called Politely Angry, uh, where I talk about capitalism and religion and corporatism, the prison industrial complex, and of course, I also take, make fun of and shit on Jeff Bezos, because why not? I think that dude needs to be taken down a couple pegs. So if you enjoy that kind of comedy, then you will probably enjoy my stand-up comedy albums as well. Uh, once again, the website is krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A dot com. Thank you so much.